Right now on Denver 7 News at 5 o'clock, Marshall fire victims are still waiting for real answers about the cleanup process. County officials are set to get the ball rolling this week on what's expected to be a long and painful process. Another sign of progress in the pandemic, the final county in the metro is getting rid of its mask mandate. But the impact of the pandemic is still being felt in our schools. We have children who have been sitting at home for a year and a half and they're not socialized to school or they, they're out of the habits of school. Denver public school leaders respond to this and other classroom concerns teachers are revealing in an anonymous survey, mm -hmm. which is just a snapshot of the stress teachers are dealing with right now. So we'll explain uh, what help is on the way for them. Thanks for joining us this morning. I'm Brian Sanders and I'm Nicole Brady and Lisa is here with a look at another nice day ahead before things change once again, Lisa. Yeah, and this is a pretty good indication of that. When we start to see some of this high cloud cover rolling in, good chance that we've got a storm coming in behind it and that storm's going to hit the mountains tonight. It's going to hit us here across the plains tomorrow. So today another beautiful one, but it's going to be followed by much colder weather and snowy conditions tomorrow. So at the bus stop this morning, Morning. Your kids are leaving right around freezing, upper 20s to low 30s early on. We're going to be once again right around 60 degrees this afternoon. There will be a little bit more cloud cover though today, but mid to upper 50s from Erie north up to Fort Collins. We've got Parker at 58, Bailey, Deckers, Evergreen all right around 50 and low 40s near Estes Park and Allen's Park. So some pretty mild conditions. Take a look at Futurecast by early tomorrow morning. I think we're, we're again going to see some of the first of the snowfall will be north near Fort Collins. But I do think, Jason, luckily, at least it's going to miss tomorrow morning's commute. The Wednesday night commute, not so nice. Yeah, we'll, we'll take a closer look coming up. I am concerned about that as well, especially after the west side of town. We can see a bit more snow right now. The drive overall looks pretty nice and no weather related issues yet. We do have, though, a closure still of Pecos, and it's going to be between 64th and 68th right here, basically between Highway 36 and I-76. It's that section right there. So federal obviously is an easy alternate to get around it. You could even use I-25 to get around it as well if you wanted to, uh, but that's going to be closed down for this uh, crash investigation that happened on the overnight hours. Let me take you out to the west side of town. So we still have some uh, road work that's happening out there from that camera out at I-70 and Ward Road. You can see how everybody's getting over here to the right. Looks like they're in the process of picking up all the cones and turning around the signs and they should have all lanes open here momentarily. No delay out there for us right now and a good looking drive just about anywhere else you want to go on and off the highways. Well, it has been one of the biggest hurdles for Marshall Fire victims this morning. We're getting new details on when debris will finally start to be removed from the burn area. It should be a long process mm -hmm. too. Denver 7's Veronica Acosta joins us live this morning from Louisville with the newest information. Veronica. Well, this neighborhood behind me here in Louisville, it's one of the many that was charred by the Marshall Fire. This was nearly two months ago, and in this neighborhood, there's a lot of debris that still needs to be removed. The good news is that Boulder County has said they are extending the deadline for people to go ahead and fill out that form, informing county officials that they want to be a part of this debris removal plan. So that's extending to Friday, and more importantly, county officials are saying they're going to have some more details about how exactly they're going to be getting rid of some of this debris. So officials said they hope to have those specific details by the end of this week when that form deadline is coming up and we're talking about the right of entry form. The deadline to submit this, it's been pushed back a couple of times. Most recently it was supposed to expire last night. As of about two weeks ago, though, more than a thousand residents had already signed up for the program. If you haven't signed up for the debris removal program just yet, but you want to be a part of it, we do have that form over on our website. That's thedeverchannel.com. We're in Louisville this morning. I'm Veronica Acosta, Denver Sub. All right, thank you, Veronica. Also today, the city of Louisville will discuss different ways to resolve zoning issues for those who want to rebuild after the fire. The proposal would give the zoning administrator authority to resolve any conflicts or discrepancies between properties. Aurora's City Council has decided they will keep discussing a controversial development next month after testimony on the plan lasted into early this morning, 1 a.m. The Aurora Sentinel reports that they'll instead take up the issue on March 28th. A developer wants to build a new 311 unit apartment complex at the East Bank Shopping Center near South Parker Road in Quincy. Some people think the new construction will revitalize the shopping center, but others are worried about the size of the building and the traffic it will bring. Boulder County is ending its indoor mask mandate Friday night at 5 o'clock. It's the final county in the metro to lift the requirement. The mask requirement for Boulder schools will also end on Friday. 
This morning, we're working to learn more after a threat forced the Cherry Creek School Board to hold its meeting virtually last night. The district says it was a bomb threat that came from someone with a documented criminal history. It was just last week Jeffco's board meeting had to go virtual because of a threat against the superintendent. Meanwhile, some Denver public school teachers say they are overworked, understaffed and feel unsafe in the classroom. That's according to results from an anonymous survey that dis by the district's accountability committee. In it, teachers say critical positions have remained unfilled in schools and they're left picking up the extra work. Teachers also say students have struggled to socialize again after COVID restrictions and Denver isn't doing enough to keep them safe. I feel like our community is not paying attention. Our community is not rallying the troops and coming to our schools and say, how can we help? We heard you're struggling. We heard this is this is really, really rough in schools these days. How can we help? I don't see this this community wide call to arms to come to the schools and, and help them out. The superintendent for Denver Public Schools, Alex Marrero, says he's aware of the results and is in touch with the advisory council. The school district will also be releasing their own comprehensive survey on the state of schools in the coming weeks. And the Douglas County School Board is calling a special meeting for tomorrow to discuss hiring a new superintendent. The board terminated former superintendent Corey Wise's contract two weeks ago prompting an uproar from the community. Members of the board's new majority said they wanted to take the district in a new direction. Turning overseas now to Russia and Ukraine. Russia says some of its military units participating in exercises will start returning to their bases. It could be a sign of hope that tensions along the Ukrainian border are simmering. Here's ABC's Ike Jachi. This morning, the United States taking preliminary steps while the threat of war between Russia and Ukraine intensifies. The U.S. temporarily shutting down its embassy in Kiev and moving diplomats hundreds of miles away to western Ukraine. It's also telling Americans in neighboring Belarus to leave immediately. And overnight, nearly 5,000 American paratroopers at Fort Bragg spending Valentine's Day preparing for deployment to Poland as part of a larger mission to support NATO allies. I'm hoping to achieve peace. At the end of the day, that's what we want, peace. Still, the buildup of Russian troops along Ukraine's border is multiplying, analysts estimating nearly 150,000 troops. The Pentagon saying Russia could move with little or no warning. Today, Russia's parliament will vote on whether to recognize Russian-backed rebel areas of Ukraine. ABC's James Longman in Moscow with what this critical vote means. If it happens, it could lay the groundwork for war. If it gets delayed, well, that might suggest Russia is backing down. Russia still signaling a possibility for diplomacy. Its foreign minister says negotiations with the West were far from exhausted and should continue. We have not seen that de-escalation. Uh, we don't yet know that uh, President Putin has made a decision. Uh, that is why we think diplomacy continues to be viable, uh, but we need to see de-escalation in order for that diplomacy. In another sign of rising tension, the United States has announced it will offer up to a billion dollars in loan guarantees to help Ukraine's economy. Ike Jachi, ABC News, Washington. Dozens of couples really elevated their Valentine's Day. They exchanged vows at Loveland Ski Area. The massive mm -hmm. ceremony happened at Forest Meadow over 11,000 feet above sea level. 14 couples got married and 64 mm -hmm. renewed their vows. And after the ceremonies, they skied and snowboarded down the mountain. Quite the tradition out there. <laughs> Always love to see it, Lisa. Great costumes, too. Uh, now it's just about 5.09. It's a pretty mild day today. Our wake up forecast is going to put us well into the 50s by about 11 o'clock. Take a look at tomorrow's forecast, though. Definitely a hot cup of coffee kind of day. We're going to be in the upper 30s, mid to upper 30s early on, and snow will be falling by that point. We'll take a closer look at the timing of this next storm coming up. Or some hot cider. That might work. No, no. All right. Uh, we have a good drive up to Central City Blackhawk. Not seeing any weather related issues up there yet, but we will have obviously some slick roads when that storm moves in. Right now, Highway 6 as well as Highway 119 and I-70 all looking pretty good. We are working to save you more money this week. The apps you can download that will pay you to shop. And a local 100-year-old woman is making, marking the milestone birthday and making it look as easy as riding a bike. How an organization and her family are making her celebration extra special.